Okay. Uh, well, if there is no kind of questions, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of pre-lecture a little bit on some of the topics we've been talking about here. Again, it should hopefully uh, help you uh, with the lab this week as well. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, so what we kind of ended up on talking to today was about uh, alkenes and alkynes and how to go about naming those guys. And again, a reminder that uh, our alkene really does have the functional group of that carbon-carbon double bond, our alkyne having that carbon-carbon uh, triple bond as really the functional group. And that is in contrast to what we talked about when we started, which was the alkane, which is the carbon-carbon uh, single bond. As we've just seen um, and pretty much everything else we're gonna talk about in terms of organic chemistry, and as you could probably see sort of this trend, everything really does go back to these guys here. So again, I can't impress upon you enough how much easier all this stuff's going to be as soon as you get a hang on, a handle on those first 10 alkanes because really everything does sort of fall back to it. When we talk about numbering though, and that's sort of a, a main difference here, when we talk about numbering the chain as we go about naming, um, again, as we talked about, sort of the groups get uh, the smallest numbers, but here with our double bond and our triple bond, those guys get the uh, sort of smallest numbers in terms of numbering. So they kind of take the priority and that's what we'll see a lot in organic chemistry is as we talk about these different organic compounds, um, the ones that um, the functional groups typically are sort of the priority in terms of numbering. And it's also important that once we sort of establish a numbering sort of path, um, everybody else is numbered according to that way. Um, so we talk about naming, we wanna give whenever there's sort of an option as to where that double bond or triple bond can be located, uh, we do wanna give a number for where it's at. That's why though, when we talk about something like this guy here, are like this guy here. You know, we actually don't need a number here. This is just ethene and this is just ethine. Again, there's really only one spot since there's only two carbons, you know, the triple bond's gotta be there, double bond's gotta be there. So usually about three or four carbons, you know, you do got to give that number for where that, you know, double bond or triple bond is located. Uh, so we did one sort of uh, name to formula at the end uh, last time there in lecture. So why don't we look at a couple more here, give you a couple more practices at that. So why don't you take uh, three ethyl, I'll go uh, four pentene. Why don't you draw the condensed formula for that? And why don't we just do, uh, yeah, we'll just do three butene. So draw the condensed formulas for each of those and see what you come up with. And we'll make sure everybody's on the same page on that. Okay, so remember that when we have a name, we always wanna work backwards and really just sort of dissect uh, what's given to us. So if we're working backwards here, we would start with pentene. So pentene gives us a lot of clues as to sort of what is going on here in terms of the formula. The pentene part, if you will, or the penta part, tells us it's five carbons. So that's really where we'll start with. So we'll have uh, five carbons. The ENE -E means that it is a double bond and the four, remember in front of it, is the location of where that double bond is. Again, since you are drawing, you could do carbon number one on the left. You could do carbon number one on the right. It is your choice as to which way you wanna do it. I, again, I'm just, I'm just gonna call this carbon number one and go to the right. That means if that's carbon number one, carbon two would be next to it, carbon three and carbon four so one, two, three, four would be where our double bond would start. That would take care really of the back end here. Any questions on that there? Three ethyl means that a carbon number three, 
we have a ethyl group. Ethyl is based off of ethane, which means it's a two carbon group, looking something like that. So because I have locked this in as carbon number one, I got to keep it for my group that's attached. So that's carbon one. Again, next to it would be carbon two. And next to it, there would be carbon number three, where we would have our ethyl group at that point. That is going to take care of that. At this point, as we've done before, everything else here will be hydrogen. The goal here is every carbon needs four bonds. So the carbon at the end here has two, which means to get them to four needs two hydrogens. Carbon next to it with this guy coming in is three bonds, which means just needs one hydrogen. Carbon next to it also has three bonds coming in, needs one hydrogen. Guy next to it has two bonds coming in, which means needs two. And the guy at the end, which typically happens if there's no double bond or triple bond there at the end, uh, will need three. So this would be our condensed formula for it. Any questions on that there? If you wanted to line structure it, you could. One, two, three, four, five. You would start with kind of a five carbon structure. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, if I call the guy on the left carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, that's where our double bond would be. That's a really badly drawn double bond. First guy should be illustrator. Uh, since that is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, this would be our two carbon ethyl group happening there. Any questions on how to turn that into that? Okay, then uh, starting with this guy, pretty straightforward, not a lot to work with here, but the butane, butene part, basically based off of butane, which is four carbons in a row. Three butene, E and E means we got the double bond working and it is at carbon number three. And again, I'm gonna call this carbon one, but you could go the other way if you wanted to. That would be carbon two, that would be carbon three, which means our double bond would end up right about there. At this point, nothing left other than hydrogen. So two for the air, this guy just needs one, this one needs two, and guy at the end needs three. Any questions on that? Line structure looks something like this. Yes. So one, two, three, four carbons, double bond happening there at carbon number three. Any questions on that? Now you might notice something that sometimes does happen in organic chemistry. So we took the name three butene and we drew it and we ended up with that structure there on the bottom. If we started with the structure and wanted to actually get the name, we actually would end up calling it something different. We would actually call it one butene. And that sometimes happens, what you'll notice that sometimes, sometimes they write names. And you know, if you actually draw it out, you would actually go, wait, we actually should number in this direction, right? And that really would be one butene. Um, but again, that sometimes happens when you go from name to formula you end up with a sort of formula or a picture that if you were starting with the formula, you would actually end up with a slightly different name because of that. So that does happen occasionally uh, when you kind of go from a uh, name to formula. But since they did give you the name, you would just draw it obviously like they uh, wrote it. Any questions on how to go from name to formula or um, formula to name? Any questions on that? Another thing about alkenes and alkynes is you can have a ring structure that's like that. So for example, you know, if we look at like we did with our alkane, our cycloalkane, this again is our six carbon alkane that's in a ring structure. This is cyclohexane. Now you could, actually have 
a double bond or maybe even a triple bond, for example, in the actual ring structure. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. For example, we could have like a double bond that would be there. And this would become cyclohexene, E-N-E, right? A-N-E for double single bonds, E-N-E because we have a double bond. Would we need to name where that's located? The answer is no, because there's nothing else attached. So wherever this double bond is, either that carbon or that carbon would be considered carbon number one in terms of numbering. What happens if we do have something that is attached? So let's say we had this, and let's just say we had a methyl group over here. Now, how would we go about sort of naming this? Well, what we would want to do is obviously find the biggest carbon chain, longest carbon chain, and it's actually the ring structure. And this would then still be cyclohexene because of the double bond. But we do have a group attached, which is a methyl group. Now, when you have a sort of cycloalkene, you got a double bond, we do have to number. And the numbering is sort of important the way that you do it. And what I mean by that is you got to go through the double bond. So what do I mean by that? So if you have this guy here just redrawn, you may be tempted to go, well, my double bond's here. And if I go one, two, and three, that seems like a very small number as opposed to going one, two, three, four, five. Now, that is a small number, but it is incorrect in terms of the way you have to number when a ring like this where you have a double bond. So what you need to do is actually erase the whole thing. Let me see again, put it back together here. You actually have to go through the double bond. So what I mean by that is if you decided you wanted to start here, you would then need to come through the double bond first. And that would be two, this would be three, this would be four, and this would be five in terms of its location. Now, your other option would be to start at the other side of the double bond, which would be here. You also would need to go through the double bond. So that would be two, three, four going this way as opposed to one two three four five so which way gave us the smaller number in this case it is actually going starting with the green one two three four going that way as opposed to one two three four and five going this way but you do have to number through the double bond. So that's really important when you are deciding which way you go. You can't go away from the double bond. So you again, can't start here and kind of go away from the double bond or start here and go away from the double bond. You actually have to number through the double bond. One end of that double bond will be carbon number one, and then you'll go through it to carbon number two and so forth. So in this case, I think we found uh, going this way one, two, three, and four actually gives us a smaller number than going obviously this way down, one, two, three, four, five. That means that this would be four methyl cyclohexene. Any questions on that name? You'll also notice that because it is a ring structure, we don't need to give the actual location of where it is on that name. Again, it's assumed to be carbon number one, wherever it's sitting. Any questions on how to name that there? So once you try one here, why don't you do uh, 
Let's do let's double bonded there and let's go. Let's do a methyl. Let's do a chlorine here. I missed the carbon. We'll assume it's a straight line. All right, take a moment or two and see what you come up with in terms of this name. Okay, uh, so same approach here. Obviously, the biggest or longest carbon chain is the ring. It's still that six-member ring, which again is based off of cyclohexane. Because of this double bond that's here, it goes from cyclohexane to cyclohexene, E-N-E. We obviously have two groups attached. We have a methyl group and a chloral group. So we just need to kind of figure out the numbering. So really the numbering does need to start at the double bond. So we could start here at carbon one. And remember we would have to go through the double bond to carbon two, to carbon three, to carbon four, carbon five and carbon six. Going in this, uh, I guess that's clockwise fashion, we would have a group at carbon number four and carbon number six. Our other option would be to start at the other end of that double bond. And again, this would be carbon one. And again, we would have to go through the double bond. So that would be carbon two. That would be carbon three, carbon four, carbon five and carbon six. That would be counterclockwise and would give us numbers of three and five. So now you need to decide which way is, is the correct way. And the correct way would be three and five. It is as simple as three is smaller than four, basically. So that's all you need. So here we would want a number in the green direction. So we'll get rid of the other direction there so we can see. Now it makes clear what we got going on. We got uh, carbon number three, a methyl group. Carbon number five, a chloral group. What's left is alphabetical order. Remember that regardless of number, we're gonna go alphabetical order here. That means we would actually start with five chloral, even though it has a bigger number, three methyl, and the base of our name there, cyclohexene. Any question on where that name came from? <clears throat> okay, so just to make sure that I got it correct, um, we want to make sure that our numbers are the lowest numbers, but then when we're writing it out, that's when the alphabetical order comes into place, right? Not it, while trying to figure out which one goes first. Exactly. So sort of in numbering, um, in numbering the, well, I'll put it this way, in numbering the, um, the double bond technically would be your first priority. Now, no matter what you do in terms of the double bond in this ring structure, it's always gonna be carbon one, even on the inside, right? It was carbon one. Mm -hmm. So because it's kind of a tie for the double bond, no matter which way you go, it's always gonna be carbon one. The next thing that you would wanna look at, the next important thing would be alphabetical. So that's why I chose, uh, you know, going, well, we went clockwise here. We went at their groups, I guess, I guess the better way to say that. The next important thing would be the groups that are attached. And the groups attached obviously is three and five, but you're correct. When you get to the naming part, it's about alphabetical regardless of number. So number smallest for numbering everybody, but then when you put it together, alphabetical there for the naming part of it in terms of the groups, yes. Okay, thank you. Other questions on that? Okay, so uh, I want to do one more example like this. Let me just uh, make one up here. So let me see what we got. Let's go with, uh, uh, let's do, 
award-winning drawing here. We'll go that way. And I don't know, let's do a, uh, let's do a chlorine there and, um, whoops, let's do like a, let's see what happens here. All right. Why don't you give this one a go? I just made it up. We'll hope it all works out here. Get rid of the extra line there. All right, see what you come up with. Take a look and, and make sure. So clearly whenever you see sort of a ring structure like this, this is gonna be obviously the longest carbon chain. Remember when we do do the longest carbon chain that has double bonds or triple bonds in it, it does need to contain those double bonds or triple bonds. So obviously the ring part here does contain it. So this is our longest uh, continuous carbon chain. It is five carbons. I think that was the bad thing I drew there. One, two, three, four, five. So five carbons is gonna be based off of cyclopentane because of the double bond, the A-N-E now becomes cyclopentene. And now we have a chloral group here we have a two carbon group over here, two carbons based off of ethane because it's a group becomes an ethyl group at this point. And now what's left is we do need to number. So I just wanna be clear again, I butchered that answer a second ago. So I just wanna make sure I'm clear in the way I answer this. The first priority would be in this case, the double bond in terms of numbering. But because this is a ring structure and it happens in any ring structure, no matter where that double bond is, it's always gonna be carbon one. Either you start it there or you start it there as carbon one, but it is gonna be uh, one no matter where that double bond is. Technically speaking, the double bond would have the priority just like it would if it was a straight non sort of ring type structure. But because it is a ring structure, no matter which way you number, because you have to go through the double bond, you know, this side on the left is gonna be carbon one or this side on the right is gonna be carbon one. So that kind of comes back to like a tie like we were talking about before. So no matter what you do, you know, no matter which way you go, the double bond's always gonna be number one. And that will always happen in a ring structure like this. What you then would do when it's a tie is you kind of wanna go to the next important thing. And the next important thing would be where the groups are located. And we would then want to figure out which way we could number to give the groups the smallest number. That we do have two options. And in this case, we could start with this guy over here is carbon one, which would be actually this guy down here. And this guy over here would be carbon two. This guy would be carbon three. This would be carbon four. And this would be carbon five. Going in this sort of clockwise fashion, we end up with a group at carbon number four and carbon number five. Our other option would be to start at the double bond on the left-hand side there and call this guy carbon number one, which would mean carbon number two as we go through the double bond, to carbon number three, to carbon number four, to carbon number five. So in the red direction or the counterclockwise direction, we end up with the carbon, our groups at number three and number four. So let me just clarify one point at this point. Because there is a difference in terms of the sort of clockwise direction and counterclockwise direction in terms of the numbering, at this point, we could stop and make our decision that we should go in this direction simply because three is smaller than four. So, First priority would be the double bond. If it makes no difference, like it doesn't in a ring, the next priority is where the groups are located. Now, let's just say hypothetically, I'm not sure how you would accomplish this, but hypothetically speaking, let's say we went clockwise and counterclockwise and we ended up with groups at three and four and three and four, no matter sort of which way we went. Not gonna happen in this case, but let's just say that did happen. So where we would be at that point is we have now, Double bond doesn't matter which way you go. It doesn't matter in terms of the location of the groups, which way you go. What you would then default to in terms of numbering would then be alphabetical. If it made a difference, if you went you know, clockwise versus counterclockwise to give the alphabetical order the smaller number. So that's what I, I was trying to say just a second ago. So I just wanna make sure I clarify that. 
Uh, double bond will never make a difference in a ring structure. So, you know, where we usually default to is then where the groups are located in terms of the smallest numbers, which is basically what we did here. If you happen to hit a tie in this situation, then you would default to alphabetical. And the reason we default to alphabetical is because when we name it, we wanna put the groups in alphabetical order. So those are sort of the steps you would follow in terms of getting your numbers down. You basically have two ways of numbering. First off, the functional group. If it doesn't matter for the functional group, the next important thing would be the locations of the groups to make sure that they're the smallest number. If it doesn't matter which way you go in terms of the group's location, the third important thing would be alphabetical order. I hope that sort of clarifies what I was trying to spit out, I think, a second ago. Okay, so in this case, we don't need to go to alphabetical in terms of the numbering because we didn't hit a tie. We obviously saw going in the clock, a counterclockwise direction is the smallest uh, number. So that is the way we would want to go. That means that our chloral group would be a carbon number three our ethyl group would be a carbon number four. Now that we've got the numbering situated, we now go alphabetical. So again, E would come after C. So in this case, the numbering actually agrees with us. This would be three chloral, four ethyl, and then our base of our name, cyclopentene. Any questions on that there? And this technically is why in, if there was no difference in terms of the groups sort of numbering, we would default to alphabetical because ultimately we would put it in order in alphabetical. Okay, other questions on that there are how to name these sort of cycloalkenes. Got a few minutes left here. So I do want to touch upon another sort of thing that we will obviously we'll obviously get into this stuff a little bit more on Wednesday as well during lecture. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some isomers that sort of occur as a result of these double bonds. So if you remember, we talked about earlier on that isomers are uh, the same molecular formula but different connectivity, right? And basically, as we talked about when we were talking about, I think we were doing that pentane one, C5H12, that, you know, you could do an isomer just simply by a rearranging sort of, you know, how you hook everybody up. So, you know, for pentane, we could just go straight across and as we talked about earlier on today, you know, instead of going five across, you know, maybe we just do, I can draw that right there, we go four across, and maybe do that fifth one coming up off the end here, our second end, put in our hydrogens here. Again, if you count the hydrogens, if you count the carbon, still five carbons, still 12 in each of these, the way we're able to identify again that these are truly isomers we're by actually naming them. So five carbons straight in a row there, nothing else attached is going to be pentane. As we talked about when we would do this guy, the longest continuous carbon chain would actually be four, which would take us to butane with a group attached here, which would be a methyl group. And again, if we number, we would wanna go right to left here because going right to left gives the methyl group a two. If we went left to right, the methyl group would end up at a three. So again, always smallest number. This would be two, as I squeeze too close, two methyl butane. That is the best way to know that you really did draw an isomer. You end up with two different names. As we talked about, if you ended up with the same name, you know, even if you kind of made it look very different, perhaps. You know, you may look at this and go, that is definitely different. I mean, clearly it doesn't look like any of the other ones I drew, 
But if you were going to name it, even though you drew it all funky like that, you would go one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons, longest continuous carbon chain is five there and that's it that is still called pentane even though you drew it all funky looking this is not an isomer even though it may appear different than this guy the reason for that is in this case these are all single bonds and what it means when we have single bonds is we have what is sometimes referred to as free rotation about the bond which means you essentially could take the groups attached to this carbon at the end and spin it and they're freely able to rotate all the way around the group. And that's why when we draw, say, alkanes, for example, you know, if we had like a fluorine here, just hypothetically speaking, you know, we could draw it up on the top. Or, you know, we could draw it over there. Or, you know, we could draw it down. And the, the truth is they're all the same structure. They're all the same thing. They're all identical to each other. It's because of that free rotation that occurs, you know, the technically that flooring could kind of rotate anywhere it wants. So we could represent it being like over, over here, over here, over here. And you may not believe me, but these are all exactly the same thing because if I went to name this guy right here, this would be one floral ethane. And because it's that carbon number one, actually they'll just honestly just call it floral ethane because that could be carbon one or that would be carbon one, but they would call it one floral ethane or just floral ethane. This would be floral ethane. This would be floral ethane. That's all the same in this particular case. So what happens though, when we put on those double bonds to our isomers is when we slap in a double bond between two carbons, it locks those carbons into place. So what happens is as we put those double bonds in, we no longer have that free rotation. The things cannot move around kind of like in a circle, if you will, because of that extra bond there, it just kind of locks them together. And what that ends up doing is it creates, when you look at a double bond, perhaps two groups that end up being locked in to the same side of the double bond. In this case, both of these groups, the methyl group, are above the double bond, right? Same side. That is what is referred to as being the cis isomer. Cis means same side of the double bond. If you put those two groups on the bottom of the double bond, this would still be a cis isomer because this group and this group are on the same side of the double bond. What happens though, if those groups end up getting locked into place on opposite sides of the double bond? This group and this group are on opposite sides of the double bond. That is what is referred to as a trans isomer, basically opposite sides. And we get these type of isomers because of that locked into place that occurs between the carbon carbon double bond. Now, how do you know if these guys are isomers are even possible? There's sort of a rule when we talk about cis and trans isomers that when you look at the double bond, a couple of things has to sort of occur. You have to have Let me go B. 
when you look at those two carbons, each of the carbons within the double bond region here, the first thing you have to look at is what are the groups attached to this carbon here on the left? Are they different? And if the answer is yes, they are different things, then so far so good for cis and trans. You would then go to the other carbon in the double bond and look at the group on top, look at the group on the bottom and see if they are different. And if the answer is yes, you're good to go so far. By the way, if the answer is no to either of those things, then you cannot have a cis or trans. So if the answer is no on either side, there will be no cis or trans isomer. Now, the other thing that you need to make sure of is when you look at the two different carbons, is there a group that's the same on different carbons? And if the answer is yes, then congratulations, you can have a cis or trans. If the answer is no, then there would be no cis or trans possible. When we're doing cis or trans, these groups can even be a hydrogen in common on both of them. Any questions on that there? So looking at those two that we had up there just a second ago, to finish up on here, I'll draw something like this. And okay. So first off, when you're analyzing whether or not either of these guys can be a cis or trans, you always want to focus right there on the double bond region, right? So this is where you want to focus. So what are the first things we need to look at? Well, we need to look at each of the carbons and we need to make sure that there are different groups attached. So I'll call this carbon one over here. I'll call this carbon two. On carbon one, there's a hydrogen as one group and there's a methyl as a group. So these are different groups. So that's good. Going to carbon number two, that's a methyl group and that's a hydrogen. These are also different groups. So that is good as well. Now, is there a group that is the same on opposite carbons? When we look at the opposite carbons, there is actually a group that is the same. In this case, the CH3 group is the same as the CH group over here. Could also do the hydrogens if you wanted to, but CH3 and CH3. When we look at those groups, they're on opposite sides of the double bond. This would be our trans isomer. Question on that. Looking over here at our isomer over here, again, focusing in on the carbon-carbon double bond Looking at the groups attached to the carbon on the left, again, we'll call this guy, come here. We'll call this guy carbon one, carbon two. On carbon number one, we have a methyl group and a hydrogen. They are different groups, which is good. Carbon number two, methyl group and hydrogen group, different groups, which is good. Again, same thing. Are there the same group on opposite carbons? And we see the same ones there. And we'll go with this. We see again our methyl group and our methyl group are on the same side of the different carbons, the same side of double bond. This would be our cis isomer. Any questions on that? To finish up on why are they isomers, you may be wondering to yourself. If we were going to name this guy, what would be the longest carbon chain that we got going on here? 
And sometimes when things are drawn in this sort of isomer arrangement, people mess up on the longest carbon chain. Longest carbon chain would be one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, and four carbons. So even though you may not see that, that people focus in on just the two in the middle, this is actually four carbons. These are hydrogens. So in terms of naming, not important. So four carbons in a row is butene. And that would be two butene because of where the carbon, carbon double bond is located. Carbon one, carbon two, or carbon one, carbon two. And if you put that in front, this is known as trans two butene. What happens when we look at our cis isomer? Again, one carbon here, two carbons there, three carbons there, and four carbons there as well. That also is butene. That also is one, two butene, no matter which way you go. That is cis two butene. So this is why they're referred to as isomers because just like the isomers we talked about with the alkanes, they're exactly the same formula. They're just arranged differently because of where the groups are because of those double bonds. They either end up on the same side of the double bond, which is cis, like on the right, or they end up on opposite sides of the double bond, like trans on the left, question on that. All right, so uh, that will wrap it for discussion. Again, I hope this helps. We'll obviously do some more of this stuff on Wednesday as well.